Hello, this is Tov from Trifle Production with another Blender quick tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to show you how you can generate clouds or create clouds easily in Blender. And this involves uh, an older version of Blender, which is 2.79. Uh, now in 2.79 it has uh, a built-in add-on. Let me show you guys where that is. Get preferences. Let me type in cloud here. I don't know why that's there. But the cloud generator, I'm going to activate that and close that out. Now this only works in uh, cycles render. And uh, for some reason, the cloud generator only exists, to my knowledge, in 2.79. Doesn't exist in any earlier version of Blender or any later version of Blender. And I did reach out to Ton about that. Let me pull up that email. Uh, here it is. I asked him, I said, I've been using Blender for quite some time for my company and for my business. And I've noticed that in later versions of Blender, after 2.79, it's it has been discontinued. I asked him why. He just said he doesn't know, which I guess is understandable since he's kind of a busy person. But uh, that was a response that I got from Tan, who was the, uh, I think he's the CEO at this point of Blender, of the Blender Foundation. So it was cool for him to reach out or reach back out to me, give me that information. But uh, this add-on works fairly well. And I've got uh, this scene set up here. Now, a uh, thing you wanna, might want to keep in mind is that when you do um, use this uh, generator, it only works in uh, cycles, doesn't work in the uh, regular Blender render engine. And you can pretty much use any shape you want to, to generate the clouds. Uh, you can manipulate shapes uh, to get, you know, any, any kind of creative cloud that you want to get, which would be helpful for you in, in the... Uh, creation of your scene of, and of your sky. Now once you've uh, created your cloud, you want to get the right kind of camera angle. It, it doesn't have to be exactly the camera angle that you want to have in your scene. Like for example, for uh, this tutorial, I've set up this, this uh, quick city scene. Let me uh, generate it out so you can see what it looks like. Let me render it, render it out, I mean, for stuff 12. And you can see the the cloud is, or the camera is pretty much pointing from the sidewalk up into the sky. So it's pretty much a ground level up kind of a shot. So that's how you would want to kind of loosely place your camera in, uh, when you want to generate your clouds. So let me close this out. Let's just make these clouds and see what we can come up with. Now I've got three examples. I've got Suzanne's head, or the monkey head Suzanne. I've got a sphere here and I've got a cube. I'm going to turn this to the uh, cycles. Like I said before, just make sure in, in the cycles render engine. Uh, let me see. Let's turn the viewport to rendered. And I know some people are, have advanced up to 3.0 and 3.1, so it's, they're trying to still kind of figure out the placements of the options for 2.79. So it's kind of tricky. So if you're wanting to uh, find out where your camera options are and things like that or the other options up here it's it's kind of different but I just would click on one of these meshes and they'll give you the rest of your options of the tabs for your options up here and so I've created the uh, the sky to kind of match the sky of my scene for where I want the clouds to be and I'm going to click on this first uh, uh, option here which is Suzanne's head and once you've activated the add-on, it's, it's in the Creative tab of Blender, which would, let me pull this down a little bit so you can see a little bit better. Okay, so we're going to scroll down here. Now, you can't really see it, but this is the Creative tab. And when you scroll down here, you'll see Cloud Generator. It's got like four options for clouds creation, but the thing is, no matter what option you choose, it, they all come out looking the same. You can't really... These options don't really affect the way the clouds come out in terms of the way they look. So we're going to click on Susanne's head. We're going to see what's going to happen here at the bottom in the uh, rendered viewport. And once you've clicked on your mesh, you click on Generate Cloud. 
and it gives you a cloud here and pull this up and it it's in the shape of Suzanne's head that's how you can get the shapes you want before you activate the cloud generator on a mesh pretty much have the shape you want the cloud to be in first then click on the button let's click on our sphere here let's pull this over so we can see it better same for this and scroll this up generate cloud we have this kind of a cloud let's do the same thing for our cube click on our cube let's reposition our viewport generate cloud and it gives us a smaller more compact cloud now you can see these clouds are kind of dark and the other thing I can uh, that is a bit a little bit safer to do when you generate these clouds only generate them one at a time because I've seen that uh, if you try to gener generate a lot of clouds at once and you try to undo or degenerate a cloud or a mesh it's going to affect the other two I'll show you what I mean I'm going to turn this back to a cube by pressing degenerate and once you've done that you can see that here this is partially a cloud and partially a sphere this is partially Suzanne's uh, cloud form on this side and partially uh, the mesh of Suzanne so that affects uh, for some reason it affects other, cl other clouds or other meshes so we're going to delete this one and we're going to delete that also and we're just going to focus on Suzanne Let's delete that uh, it really messes this up and press ctrl z so this, this is why it's just best to just work with one mesh as opposed to several to just avoid all you know any kind of uh issues with the uh, cloud uh, generation let's go back to our f uh, front viewport here let's click on suzanne position that and press degenerate and that gives us suzanne back again so we're going to turn it back to a cloud again I'm going to show you how I can light the cloud up because at this point we when we click on generate cloud it gives us a nice looking cloud but it's pretty much flat we want to have a more three-dimensional looking cloud in the sky more uh, more of a puffier look so to speak because this looks like a rain cloud so to speak a flat rain cloud in order to get a cloud that has uh, you know more form to it we're going to put a sun lamp in here. So I'm going to press Shift A, and we're going to go down to Lamp and click on Sun, and instantly we can see that now it looks like a cloud. I'm going to move this over a little bit more so that the sun is inside of the cloud, and we have the top part pretty much a powdery white color, and the bottom part, which is not facing the sun, so to speak, is darker, which is how clouds look. Now you can change the color of the clouds by changing the color of the lights. So we're going to keep our selection on our sunlight. Go to our sun icon here, and right now it's white, so we can turn it to green. Turn it to blue or purplish color, turn it to red. So that looks pretty cool. But for right now, because of what we want our scene to look like, we're going to put it back on white and leave it at that. And we're going to export this. We're going to let's uh, kind of change the uh, viewport or the view of our camera so it kind of fits loosely like I explained before the view of our scene so we're going to go back to uh, let me see solid mode we're going to turn this because as I explained before our camera is pointing up from the sidewalk pointing up at the towards the top parts of the building so we're, uh, it's going to kind of tilt like this so we want to put our camera uh, in this position and the easiest way to do that is go to view and then align view and then align active the camera to view and it does that it did it for the top part but not for the bottom which is kind of strange I don't know what that what happened like that but this is what we're looking for did it really do it that way okay, let me try that because I don't think it actually did it because our camera you see, our camera's still pointing straight on, so let's redo that. I'm going to tilt it again. I hope I'm, I think I'm pointing in the right direction. Let's, let's just unify these windows here. Join area. Do that. We want our camera pointing up at the cloud from the, from the ground. So we're going to do that. We're going to go to, we're going to go to view. 
this right one, you have view, align view, align active camera to view, and there we go. I don't know why I didn't do it the first time. Let's kind of center a little bit better. And we don't want, we just want to export the image of the cloud without having that blue background because we just want the cloud itself without having the background because that's going to help uh, in terms of placing the cloud in the scene without us having to do more work in terms of fitting it a little bit better behind the buildings. So what, in order to do that we have to get our transparent background. So we're going to go to our camera option here, the camera icon. We're going to scroll down to film and click on transparent. Because what that will do is that will give us a transparent background image. You have to make sure it's on RGBA because R is red, G is green, B is blue, and A is alpha. That's what we want. We don't, if it's on black and white or just RGB, turn it from that to RGBA. And also PNG because that's PNG exports uh, alpha backgrounds. So we're going to find out where we want to save it. Choose where we're going to save it. Let me see. Uh, so kind of trying to get used to 2.79 still, but oh, here's our option for saving. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to save it. Um, let me see. Let me save it on desktop. Okay. Or actually, let me save it in a different folder. Let me see. Let me save it in the... Let me save it right here. So transparent, transparent cloud. Let me make sure I copy this web, this uh, this address here, this uh, file path here. And we have to go look for it and accept. And then I'm going to close this out. Just let me just save it just in case. It's always good to save in Blender. Close that out. Let me pull open that scene. Now we're going to go to File and Import, then Images as Planes. Now, if this, if you go into any version of Blender, you don't see this option. You have to activate it because this is also also a built-in add-on that's not activated by default in Blender. So go to Edit and go to Preferences and type an image. And once you've done that, you'll see import, export, Im import images as planes and put a check in that uh, box and that activates it. And go to edit again, or you can go to shift A. Shift A also works. Does it work like that? In 2.79, it does work. There's an option here for importing images as planes, but I guess it's not in later versions of Blender. So I'm going to go to file again. And we're going to go to import images as planes. Click on there, control V. Enter. You see it coming up. Uh, control V. I'll just have to navigate to where it is. Let me see. Sometimes Blender does this stuff where it just can't seem to. <laughs> keyboard commands don't seem to work like they're supposed to. But let me see if I can remember exactly where it is. Let me see. Uh, that's probably not there. Let me go up to Blend to Tutorials or Blender Projects, I think. Blender Projects, Trifle Tutorials. Okay. Oh, okay. I don't. I, do, I don't believe this. I don't think I actually even expo I didn't even. Okay, that's a rookie mistake on my part. For some reason, I didn't. I didn't render the image out <laughs> the first time. Uh, my apologies. It's summer and it's hot. Okay, let me open that back up. I was trying to figure out what was going on. I was, I was blaming Blender, but I was supposed to blame myself. <laughs> let me click on that. And now here I can press F12. Okay. And then it'll render out the cloud. Oh, that's something else. It's just been a pretty long day, everyone. So I apologize for that error. Could forget all this stuff in terms of the output uh, option there because this is not necessary at all. You have to render out the scene uh, here first. Render out first. Once it's been rendered out, okay, it's almost done. 50%. Uh,
it's almost it's pretty much done so once this is rendered out like this then uh, the next step you should do is go and press F3 on your keyboard and that's the save option F3 then you can navigate to where you want to save it okay so let me see uh, let me go up let me just save it on the desktop though it's going to save time desktop and I'm going to type in cloud here make sure I copy this uh, file address here control C then save as image then close that out alright now I can go back to my desktop here or the uh, place where I want to place the clouds in control V web address and now we can see where our cloud is which is that right there important image is plain and it's right here I'm going to scale this up so it can be behind the buildings press zero again and we're going to let me see look at this through our uh, viewport render this this is an Eevee so this should be pretty much just generate pretty fast and there's our clouds can make it even make it even bigger and it fits pretty well in the scene because it's a PNG image it interacts with the environment of the world settings too and it fits right there and you can make multiple numbers of clouds in blender this way now uh, and the um, reserve options and uh, on the blender website you'll you'll have the option it has all the old blender uh, versions in there but you're gonna have to do a lot of digging in order to find it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the version of blender that I have 2.7 I'll, I'll create a link for it and I'll leave a link uh, below this video so you guys can download it and use it for yourselves but yeah that's just an easy way to create clouds in blender um, in terms of just generating the cloud just the easy way and if you're wanting uh, and the best thing to do you can have the cloud face the camera all the time so to speak if, you're, if you have a situation where you want the camera to move uh, around your scene but for the most part it's best just to use it with a stable camera or the shot like this that's just pointing straight into the sky and that's to today's Blender quick tip. And once again, I thank you guys who have been watching the tutorials. Thank you guys who have subscribed in the past. Those of you, the you who are subscribing now, and those of you who subscribe in the future, really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, adios.